What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to validate your key for our apps with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, in the last video we created this little app that generates a key for things like software registration and things like that. So in this video we want to actually verify that this is a valid key. And we need to set up certain rules that say what a valid key is and what it isn't, and then check to make sure that it is. We also want to generate a key that is valid. So people need a valid key. How do we generate a valid key? How do we check that it is valid later on? Things like that. That's what we're going to look at in this video. So head back over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the Git bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with almost 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So this is the code we had in our last video. And if you didn't see that, check the playlist we've got this generate function. And right now it's just generating, it's looping through here, it's doing its thing, and then it's spitting it out onto the screen, our key right here. But this isn't necessarily valid because we haven't created any rules for what is valid and what is not. So if we head back over here really quickly and look at this again, you can see we've got this big thing and every four characters are separated with a dash. And we've got this thing called a score. So Python has something called the ORD function, O-R-D, and that will take any character and convert it into a number. It's numeric A-N-S-C-I-I -I character, right? So an M is, I don't know, 12 or whatever. So we can convert all of these, including the dashes, into a number and then add up the number and that will be the score. Now, at any given time, this score might be 1500, 1600, 1700, 1800, 2300 and chain. It could be 2152. It could be 1516. It just depends on what randomly came up. And there's quite a lot of variance in there. So you can designate as one of your rules, okay, it has to be between 17 and 1800, or 18 and 1900, or 22 and 2300. Whatever you want for your rule, you can do. And this is not the only way to validate a key. This is just what I've chosen to do because it really doesn't matter. Make up any rule you want. As long as it's sort of complicated, that'll be fine. Now we're going to use a couple of rules. We're going to use the score. I also want to have a sort of secret digit in here. It might be the first digit. It might be the third. It might be the, you know, sixth, whatever. And we're going to designate as that, that as our sort of check digit number. And we want, if, for instance, if we want the first one, we want whatever occurs as the first character to occur let's say two other times throughout the key. You can see there isn't any other M's, so this is not valid. You know, only a key that has M, M, and M, three M's, would be valid. And it's not just M, it's whatever this first digit is. So F, for instance, we would say, hey, there needs to be four other F's in here to be valid. Now, the more digits you choose, the harder it's gonna to be to generate it, and the longer it's gonna to take to generate it, because this is creating randomly. So it has to randomly generate a key that has F, let's say three other times. Well, that's going to take longer to generate than a key that has F two other times or one other time, right? It's just going to randomly take longer. So the more complicated you make your rules, the harder it's going to be to generate a key. And if you make it super complicated, it's going to freeze a computer trying to generate it. So keep that in mind when you're making your rules for this. So Let's go ahead and start to build this thing out. Let's head back over to our code and let's come up here. And this is our generate function. And you can see down here at the end of this, what we're doing is we're outputting this to the screen, right? So instead of doing that, let's run an if statement. Let's say uh, verify here. So let's go if, and we'll call a function called verify. And we wanna pass in the key. We're gonna say, if that is true, key is verified. And right now let's just pass else he is not verified. And for now, let's just pass. Well, we don't have a verify function. So let's come up here and make one. So let's say verify the key. So let's define verify and we want to pass in that key. So the first thing we want to do is create a score for our key. So let's create a variable called score. And we want this to be global so we can access it outside of this if we want. And let's start out by setting the score to zero, right? So now let's define our check digit. And I'm calling the check digit, this is gonna be the one we want to be the special digit that we want to make a rule for. So if it's the first digit or the third digit, whatever digit you want, 
we can define that right here. So I'm just going to call this check digit and this is going to be whatever digit. So our key, we can grab any specific digit just like we would with a Python list by calling the whatever item of that thing. So if we want the first digit, that would be key zero. If we want the third digit, that would be key two. I'm going to go ahead and use the third digit. So that'll be key two. So now we need to keep track of how many times we see that digit in the key. So I'm going to create a variable called check underscore digit underscore count. And we're going to set that equal to zero. And as we loop through our key, we're going to say, okay, we see this F one other time, two other times, eight other times, whatever. We're going to keep track of it. And we'll do that by just, you know, creating a, a simple count. We'll do that in just a second. So let's break apart our key. Remember our key is like AAA, uh, just like this, right? And it's separated by these hyphens. So let's break this thing apart by hyphen. So we can do that. Let's go separate by dash, whatever. So let's create a variable called chunks. These are little chunks, right? So chunks equal key dot split. We want to split by what character? The dash. So what this will do is we'll take each of these chunks, like AAAA, and assign it to this variable. So then we can loop through by those chunks and do stuff. So what do we want to do? Well, let's loop through and check stuff, <laughs> right? So let's go for chunk in chunks. The first thing we want to do, uh, let's check to make sure that it's four characters. So, so if the len of our chunk does not equal four, we just want to return false, right? So if our chunk is less than four, then we're done and we want to just return false. So now let's keep track of how many times we see our check digit inside of our key. So let's say F is our check digit. It's the key two or the third item. So A is zero. The second A is one. This F is two, key two, right? So we want to loop through here and see how many times F occurs. So here we see one, two, three Fs. So we want to keep track of that. So we can do that with a basic loop. So let's go for car character in our chunk. Let's say if car equals check underscore digit, which is, you know, the third item, then we just want to add to this counter. So we can go check underscore digit underscore count plus equals one, right? So now let's grab the score of the ANSCII character. And like I said earlier, we can use the ORD function for that. So to do that, we just go score plus equals and then call that ORD function. And we want to pass in car. So we're looping through our chunk for each character in our chunk. We want to convert it to a number and then add that to the score, right? Remember up here, we define score to start out at zero. And then here, this will give us the score. Okay, so we've got the score here. We've got how many times our check digit occurred. Now we can sort of set up our rules based on those two things. So outside of here, let's uh, check for rules. And here is where we define our rules. Now this score, like I said, it could be anything. It could be 1,512 all the way up to 2,400, 2,300, whatever, just based on randomly what got generated. So let's say we want our score to be between 1,700 and 1,800. So let's go if score is greater than 1700 and score is less than 1800 and our check underscore digit count equals three, let's say, then we want to return true. That's it. Else we want to return false. And that's all there is to it. So this function will return either true or false, right? We don't care what any of these things are. We just care if it's true or false. And it will only be true if these things meet this rule. And that rule is it has to be greater than 1700, less than 1800, and the check digit count has to be at least three. Meaning, uh, let's see up here, this check digit count, if it's, for instance, F, F has to be in here three times. And we can see here it is, right? So if this returns true, we're good. If it returns false, what happens? Well, we come down here and that's where this bit of code comes into play. Remember, this is our generate function. We're saying, hey, 
run this function, pass in the key. If it returns true, do something. If it returns false, do something else. Well, what do we want to happen if it returns false? Well, we want to run this generate function again to generate a new key. So we could just come down here and call generate. Right? We could say uh, run the generate function again. Right? What if it is verified? What do we want to do then? Well, then let's just output everything onto the screen. So let's go key underscore label dot insert. We want to insert it into the zeroth position. We want to just insert our key like we did earlier. Right? We also want to flash up a little thing. This is valid. So we have our verify underscore label from the last video. We can dot config that and have the text say uh, valid, right? And then we also might wanna update the score label to show exactly what the score is. So we can go score underscore label, that's also from the last video, dot config, and then the text equals, and let's create an F string here and say score, and then pass in that score, which we can do because up here in the verify function, we made the score global. All right, so, that looks good. I think that will work. Let's go ahead and save this, run this guy. We did a lot of stuff there. Hopefully all this works. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships on my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Whoa, weird commercial. So, okay. So we've got generate key, boom, valid. Now you'll notice every time we click this, this will return a valid key. It won't ever return an invalid key anymore. Why? Because if it does return an invalid key, what happens? Well, it just runs the generate function again and it creates a new key. And then it checks to see if it's valid. If it's not, it runs the generate function again. And it just keeps doing that in the background very, very quickly until it returns true and then prints it out onto the screen. Right, so let's look at this. Our score is 1798, that's between 17 and 1800. Uh, the third character is N, so one, two, three. N is on there three times, so that's our rule. Let's do it again. One is now the check digit number, so we have one, two, three. And the score is between 17 and 1800, this is valid. Now let's take a look at this and see if we make our rules a little bit more difficult, right? So let's come back here and here's where our rules are. Let's say we want this to be five times, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Let's run this again. That's gonna be much harder to generate a key randomly that has five digits in it. So this might freeze, this might take a while. So if I click this, you can see down here, we're getting errors because there's too many threads happening. See, the recursion depth has exceeded. Now there are things you can do for this that I'm not really gonna go into in this video because we're just running out of time and it's you know threading and stuff like that where we can, we can change the instance check allowance for Windows and things like that. You can Google it if you want, but I'm just gonna suggest making this a little bit easier. But if we keep it as this, and you can see nothing happened, if I do it again, now it works. This time it happened to find it without burning through all the memory in our computer and all this stuff. So let's look at this. So here's three. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and it's between 17 and 1800. If we do it again, eh, we got it this time. Again and again, up oh, that time we didn't. And if we looked at the terminal, we're gonna see another batch of error stuff. Right, so keep that in mind when you're doing something like that. I suggest just kind of keeping your keys, if you're gonna use this method to three or four, if we try it for four, bring this guy over here, boom, it worked right away. You can see up, oh, but then again, it's sort of the recursion depth exceeded instance check. So for me, I'm not gonna even bother dealing with this hassle. I'm just gonna keep my rule to, you know, two, or three or something, you know? You wanna have it more than one, obvious, so at least two or three. But now when we do this, clear the screen and run this guy again, we're not gonna have any problems finding three almost every time. And the same thing with the score. If you tighten up that score, if you say, hey, only between 1750 and 1760 and 
you know, it has to be three times up here. You're going to have trouble finding that as well. You know, we can try that. So head back over here. So between 1700 and let's say 1710 or 1720, right? That's going to be hard to find randomly and you might have problems. So if we run this guy, yep, see right away, boom, we get a problem. Oh, yep, now it works, 1711, right? So just keep this in mind, the more complex the rules, the harder it's going to be to generate one randomly, the more computing power and memory and all of the things threading that's going to take place and it's going to make it much harder to do. And it really doesn't have to be that complicated to, you know, keep hackers from doing their thing, right? Let's move this back to 1800, run this guy again, and boom. So that's how you can validate your key. If you had software and you split this into two different things, you generated a key for somebody and then they had to, you know, save this key and use it to log in every time the app ran or something, you could again, you know, validate it using just this, an if statement with this, based on the key that they get, you'd have to do a loop and get the score. And then you would have to actually loop through here and get your check digit count. But you know, this is really all you would need. And you could take that and split it off into your app into its own function to validate it on its own when the app ran, right? We've done things like that in the past, super easy. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com and I'll see you in the next video.